take a seat, please, and extend a warm welcome to all of you. I'm, I'm, I assume most of you know me. I'm Heidi Wittmer. So for those who know me only by email, this is the place to go with it. Um, I work here at the Helmholtz Center for Environmental Research. And as I'm sure you're aware, we've been doing this scientific coordination in the team of the team reports. Now, it's my great pleasure to hand over to our scientific director for the, to give you the welcome to this place. Thank you. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Georg Teutsch. I'm uh, the scientific director of the Helmholtz Center for Environmental Research. I'm uh, just a hydrologist, but yeah, just a hydrologist. Now I'm not even a hydrologist, I'm a manager. <laughs> but um, I'm very happy to see you here, and I'm very happy to see you here for this conference, this very special conference, the TEEP conference. Um, I understand and I had the chance to meet the scientific advisory committee at uh, around lunchtime that this is really now, you know, taking up pace. We have been uh, involved, as Heidi Wittmann said, in the TEEP process, the TEEP international activity, and as far as I remember, it was partially at least initiated by the German Environmental Ministry. So we are happy that that worked out, and if there is anybody from the Environmental Ministry, thank you as well. And of course, all the others who were involved. And the next step, this is really where things are you know, getting concrete, getting into the details, the real life, the implementation, and that's where Again, the Federal Ministry on the Environment has actually given us the lead to have uh, the German team, if you like, so to see what happens if you, you make it happen at the scale of a, a nation. And we understand that there are, of course, other countries uh, in the world which are already doing the same thing, and uh, some we're more happy with, some others not that much, but expectations are high and um, for us as a UFZ we are in well, what would be called the kind of a national laboratory for environmental research which is the national thing is that basically 90% of our budget comes from the national funding you know we have a federal state so there are lender and bund etc so 90% of our money <clears throat> comes from the federal government therefore we're a national laboratory now um, that means, on the other hand, that we have a certain agenda, we have a certain portfolio, and that is that we are supposed to be a leader in the field of integrating different bits and pieces when it comes to environment research. That means natural sciences as well as social sciences, and water, bio issues, chemicals, etc., and really look at the whole picture to get a complete picture rather than a sectorial picture. And I definitely believe, I'm convinced, that TEEP is really a very, very good example on how to do that and how to bring in economics and how to connect things, even though I understand that, of course, a monetarization perspective is not is certainly not the only perspective which comes in there. So, for us as a UFZ, this has been definitely an, a very important project so far, and it will still lead us ahead. Uh, for the next five years, we have five years plans. Some of you may, you know, remember that there were five years plans in former GDR in uh, other parts of Eastern Europe and so on. So we are back to five years plans, and our five year plan says that TEEP is an important point uh, in kind of developing for the next five years uh, the research agenda around it. So it comes to how to quantify ecosystem services how to compare them, how to combine them, how to weigh between different options. So, to make a long story short, I think you are really at the right place at the right time. You are at an important conference, and I very much wish you a successful meeting and a success successful conference. And I really look forward to making TEEP going into practice, making it happen. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.
thank you very much. And next, I'll hand over to Pavan Sukdev, who I also think needs very little introduction in this round to extend some welcoming remarks. Thank you, Heidi, and thank you, Heidi, and thank you, uh, you have said for all that you have done for this project and for now hosting us here. Um, my first thought is how remarkable that there's 200 of you in this room, which is chock-a-block, um, because Team began as just an idea in the Commission and with Germany, thinking that, well, why can't we, if economics has made such a strong case for early action on climate change, why can't we do something like that for nature, for biodiversity? And gradually the momentum began and the ideas began rolling. Um, I just want to say how privileged I feel I am for having been at this project and, and running this as a study leader. But I think the credit really goes to all of you who are part of the TEEP community. And let me try and highlight some of the contributions, I think, to success. Not people, because I'll be for the whole evening and the whole of tomorrow. If I would start listing the people who contributed to its success, I can't do that. I'll try and make some generic statements, if I may. I think our success came broadly from four key factors. And I think one is, thank you for so many of you being here at the advisory board. Excellent people from different walks of life, from academia, from institutions, and from science and from economics. And I think their commitment to this process, their commitment to making the economic invisibility of nature uh, be addressed by policymakers and businesses has been singular, and also their knowledge and their contribution in that sense. I think the second uh, credit goes to the community itself, because one of the, the key features of the TEEP community is its open architecture. There are many people involved from the ISEE. John, thank you for being here again. And others from the uh, ISEE who have been engaged in TEEP right from the beginning, including Peter May and, and others. Like I said, let me avoid names, otherwise I'll be here forever. But since he's there and I spotted him, I thought I'd mention him. <laughs> but uh, we have quite a, an extensive network in TEEP as this community, and that has been critical because that enables the best of breed knowledge to enter the space. If we went about the traditional institutional building way, which is to start hiring people and only rely on those who work for us, so to speak, if we built a building and, and did the things which many good institutions have done, we would have taken us 100 years because that's what it takes, a great institution. But we had something like two and a half years to do this from start to finish. So I think we chose the right model, which is a network model. And I think that has been part of the success. So the community and the inclusion that it generated and the best of breed qualities that it pulled out from different parts of the world, that was excellent. And finally, to the funders, thanks for insisting on independence. It is difficult if you're a government to actually insist on something that is not comfortable for you, but <laughs> you funders actually chose to in insist on that, told me that explicitly, that you know, uh, you need to be independent. Do not be influenced by what we think or what others think. And that was the message that I passed down to the team. So I think that combination of the advisory board, of the open architecture that we adopted for this process, of the community that was created, and of the independence that the funders in fact insisted on, have been our key success, uh, success drivers. And what have we achieved? Again, many things, uh, and different things to different people, but Certainly the ones that stand out to most is that partly TEEP has been able to communicate the importance of nature. I mean, we have all along, there's one strand that combines so many different uh, people from different dimensions, be they economists or ecological economists or environmental economists, resource economists, ecologists, zoologists, biologists, social anthropologists, policy makers, and, and even business people. There's a total diversity of, of authors and reviewers, more than 500, uh, 500 of them. But what is one thing in common that they all have is that they all understood that the economic invisibility of nature was a problem, and they all believed that, and that something needed to be done about it. But making that issue become live with policymakers, and making it become live with senior business leaders and business CEOs, I think that is the singular most important contribution that TEEP has made. Because that visibility that we now have and the recognition that, yes, this is an issue. This is not just